John Bordley Rawls, February 21, 1921 to November 24, 2002, was an American moral and political philosopher in the liberal tradition. He held the James Bryant Conant University Professorship at Harvard University and the Fulbright Fellowship at the University of Oxford. Rawls received both the Shock Prize for Logic and Philosophy and the National Humanities Medal in 1999, the latter presented by President Bill Clinton, in recognition of how Rawls's work helped a whole generation of learned Americans revive their faith in democracy itself." In his 1990 introduction to the field, Will Kimlicka wrote that, "...it is generally accepted that the recent rebirth of normative political philosophy began with the publication of John Rawls's A Theory of Justice in 1971." Rawls has often been described as the most important political philosopher of the 20th century. He has the unusual distinction among contemporary political philosophers of being frequently cited by the courts of law in the United States and Canada and referred to by practicing politicians in the United States and the United Kingdom. Rawls's theory of justice as fairness recommends equal basic rights, equality of opportunity, and promoting the interests of the least advantaged members of society. Rawls's argument for these principles of social justice uses a thought experiment called the original position in which people select what kind of society they would choose to live under if they did not know which social position they would personally occupy. In his later work Political Liberalism 1993, Rawls turned to the question of how political power could be made legitimate given reasonable disagreement about the nature of the good life. Biography Early life Rawls was born in Baltimore, Maryland, the second of five sons of William Lee Rawls, one of the most prominent attorneys in Baltimore, and Anna Abel Stump Rawls. Tragedy struck Rawls at a young age. Two of his brothers died in childhood because they had contracted fatal illnesses from him. In 1928, the seven-year-old Rawls contracted diphtheria. His brother Bobby, younger by 20 months, visited him in his room and was fatally infected. The next winter, Rawls contracted pneumonia. Another younger brother, Tommy, caught the illness from him and died. Rawls's biographer Thomas Poge calls the loss of the brothers the most important events in John's childhood. Rawls attended the Calvert School in Baltimore for six years, before transferring to the Kent School, an Episcopalian preparatory school in Connecticut. Upon graduation in 1939, Rawls attended Princeton University where he graduated summa cum laude and was accepted into the Ivy Club and the American Whig Cleosophic Society. During his last two years at Princeton, he "...became deeply concerned with theology and its doctrines." He considered attending a seminary to study for the Episcopal priesthood and wrote an "...intensely religious senior thesis by at Princeton, Rawls was influenced by Norman Malcolm, Wittgenstein's student. He completed his Bachelor of Arts degree in 1943, and enlisted in the Army in February of that year. <laughs> <laughs> Military service, 1943–46 During World War II, Rawls served as an infantryman in the Pacific, where he toured New Guinea and was awarded a Bronze Star, and the Philippines, where he endured intensive trench warfare and witnessed horrific scenes such as seeing a soldier remove his helmet and take a bullet to the head, rather than continue with the war. There, he lost his Christian faith. Following the surrender of Japan, Rawls became part of General MacArthur's occupying army and was promoted to sergeant. But he became disillusioned with the military when he saw the aftermath of the atomic blast in Hiroshima. Rawls then disobeyed an order to discipline a fellow soldier, believing no punishment was justified, and was demoted back to private. Disenchanted, he left the military in January 1946. After his military service, Rawls became an atheist. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Academic career. In early 1946, Rawls returned to Princeton to pursue a doctorate in moral philosophy. He married Margaret Warfield Fox, a Brown University graduate, in 1949. 
They had four children, Anne Warfield, Robert Lee, Alexander Emery, and Elizabeth Fox. After earning his Ph.D. from Princeton in 1950, Rawls taught there until 1952 when he received a Fulbright Fellowship to Oxford University, Christ Church, where he was influenced by the liberal political theorist and historian Isaiah Berlin and the legal theorist H. L. A. Hart. After returning to the United States he served first as an assistant and then associate professor at Cornell University. In 1962 he became a full professor of philosophy at Cornell, and soon achieved a tenured position at MIT. That same year he moved to Harvard University, where he taught for almost 40 years and where he trained some of the leading contemporary figures in moral and political philosophy, including Thomas Nagel, Alan Gibbard, Honora O'Neill, Adrian Piper, Elizabeth S. Anderson, Christine Korsgaard, Susan Neiman, Claudia Card, Thomas Poge, T. M. Scanlon, Barbara Herman, Joshua Cohen, Thomas E. Hill Jr., Gertrude Doss, Andreas Teuber, Samuel Freeman and Paul Weithman. Topic. Later life Rawls seldom gave interviews and, having both a stutter partially born out of the deaths of two of his brothers via infections contracted from himself and a bat-like horror of the limelight, did not become a public intellectual despite his fame. He instead remained committed mainly to his academic and family life. In 1995 he suffered the first of several strokes, severely impeding his ability to continue to work. He was nevertheless able to complete a book titled The Law of Peoples, the most complete statement of his views on international justice, and shortly before his death in November 2002 published Justice as Fairness, a restatement, a response to criticisms of a theory of justice. Rawls died on 24 November 2002 and is buried at the Mount Auburn Cemetery in Massachusetts. He was survived by his wife, their four children, and four grandchildren. Topic. Philosophical thought Rawls published three main books. The first, A Theory of Justice, focused on distributive justice and attempted to reconcile the competing claims of the values of freedom and equality. The second, Political Liberalism, addressed the question of how citizens divided by intractable religious and philosophical disagreements could come to endorse a constitutional democratic regime. The third, The Law of Peoples, focused on the issue of global justice. Topic. A theory of justice Rawls's magnum opus titled A Theory of Justice, published in 1971, aimed to resolve the seemingly competing claims of freedom and equality. The shape Rawls's resolution took, however, was not that of a balancing act that compromised or weakened the moral claim of one value compared with the other. Rather, his intent was to show that notions of freedom and equality could be integrated into a seamless unity he called justice as fairness. By attempting to enhance the perspective which his readers should take when thinking about justice, Rawls hoped to show the supposed conflict between freedom and equality to be illusory. Rawls's A Theory of Justice 1971 includes a thought experiment he called the original position. The intuition motivating its employment is this, the enterprise of political philosophy will be greatly benefited by a specification of the correct standpoint a person should take in his or her thinking about justice. When we think about what it would mean for a just state of affairs to obtain between persons, we eliminate certain features such as hair or eye color, height, race, etc. and fixate upon others. Rawls's original position is meant to encode all of our intuitions about which features are relevant, and which are relevant, for the purposes of deliberating well about justice. The original position is Rawls' hypothetical scenario in which a group of persons is set the task of reaching an agreement about the kind of political and economic structure they want for a society, which they will then occupy. Each individual, however, deliberates behind a veil of ignorance. Each lacks knowledge, for example, of his or her gender, race, age, intelligence, wealth, skills, education and religion. The only thing that a given member knows about themselves is that they are in possession of the basic capacities necessary to fully and willfully participate in an enduring system of mutual cooperation, each knows they can be a member of the society. Rawls posits two basic capacities that the individuals would know themselves to possess. First, individuals know that they have the capacity to form, pursue, and revise a conception of the good, or life plan. Exactly what sort of conception of the good this is, however, the individual does not yet know. 
It may be, for example, religious or secular, but at the start, the individual in the original position does not know which. Second, each individual understands him or herself to have the capacity to develop a sense of justice and a generally effective desire to abide by it. Knowing only these two features of themselves, the group will deliberate in order to design a social structure, during which each person will seek his or her maximal advantage. The idea is that proposals that we would ordinarily think of as unjust, such as that blacks or women should not be allowed to hold public office, will not be proposed, in this, Rawls' original position, because it would be irrational to propose them. The reason is simple, one does not know whether he himself would be a woman or a black person. This position is expressed in the difference principle, according to which, in a system of ignorance about one's status, one would strive to improve the position of the worst off, because he might find himself in that position. Rawls develops his original position by modeling it, in certain respects at least, after the initial situations of various social contract thinkers who came before him, including Thomas Hobbes, John Locke and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Each social contractarian constructs his, her initial situation somewhat differently, having in mind a unique political morality s. He intends the thought experiment to generate. Ian King has suggested the original position draws on Rawls' experiences in post-war Japan, where the U.S. Army was challenged with designing new social and political authorities for the country, while imagining away all that had gone before. In social justice processes, each person early on makes decisions about which features of persons to consider and which to ignore. Rawls's aspiration is to have created a thought experiment whereby a version of that process is carried to its completion, illuminating the correct standpoint a person should take in his or her thinking about justice. If he has succeeded, then the original position thought experiment may function as a full specification of the moral standpoint we should attempt to achieve when deliberating about social justice. In setting out his theory, Rawls described his method as one of reflective equilibrium, a concept which has since been used in other areas of philosophy. Reflective equilibrium is achieved by mutually adjusting one's general principles and one's considered judgments on particular cases, to bring the two into line with one another. Topic. Principles of justice Rawls derives two principles of justice from the original position. The first of these is the liberty principle, which establishes equal basic liberties for all citizens. Basic liberty entails the familiar in the liberal tradition freedoms of conscience, association and expression as well as democratic rights. Rawls also includes a personal property right, but this is defended in terms of moral capacities and self-respect, rather than an appeal to a natural right of self-ownership. This distinguishes Rawls's account from the classical liberalism of John Locke and the libertarianism of Robert Nozick. Rawls argues that a second principle of equality would be agreed upon to guarantee liberties that represent meaningful options for all in society and ensure distributive justice. For example, formal guarantees of political voice and freedom of assembly are of little real worth to the desperately poor and marginalized in society. Demanding that everyone have exactly the same effective opportunities in life would almost certainly offend the very liberties that are supposedly being equalized. Nonetheless, we would want to ensure at least the fair worth of our liberties, wherever one ends up in society, one wants life to be worth living, with enough effective freedom to pursue personal goals. Thus participants would be moved to affirm a two-part second principle comprising fair equality of opportunity and the famous and controversial difference principle. This second principle ensures that those with comparable talents and motivation face roughly similar life chances and that inequalities in society work to the benefit of the least advantaged. Rawls held that these principles of justice apply to the basic structure of fundamental social institutions such as the judiciary, the economic structure and the political constitution, a qualification that has been the source of some controversy and constructive debate see the work of Gerald Cohen. Rawls further argued that these principles were to be lexically ordered to award priority to basic liberties over the more equality-oriented demands of the second principle. This has also been a topic of much debate among moral and political philosophers. Finally, Rawls took his approach as applying in the first instance to what he called a well-ordered society designed to advance the good of its members and effectively regulated by a public conception of justice. In this respect, he understood justice as fairness as a contribution to ideal theory, the determination of 
principles that characterize a well-ordered society under favorable circumstances." Much recent work in political philosophy has asked what justice as fairness might dictate or indeed, whether it is very useful at all for problems of «partial compliance» under «non-ideal theory». <laughs> political liberalism In Political Liberalism 1993, Rawls turned towards the question of political legitimacy in the context of intractable philosophical, religious, and moral disagreement amongst citizens regarding the human good. Such disagreement, he insisted, was reasonable, the result of the free exercise of human rationality under the conditions of open enquiry and free conscience that the liberal state is designed to safeguard. The question of legitimacy in the face of reasonable disagreement was urgent for Rawls because his own justification of justice as fairness relied upon a Kantian conception of the human good that can be reasonably rejected. If the political conception offered in a theory of justice can only be shown to be good by invoking a controversial conception of human flourishing, it is unclear how a liberal state ordered according to it could possibly be legitimate. The intuition animating this seemingly new concern is actually no different from the guiding idea of a theory of justice, namely that the fundamental charter of a society must rely only on principles, arguments and reasons that cannot be reasonably rejected by the citizens whose lives will be limited by its social, legal, and political circumscriptions. In other words, the legitimacy of a law is contingent upon its justification being impossible to reasonably reject. This old insight took on a new shape, however, when Rawls realized that its application must extend to the deep justification of justice as fairness itself, which he had presented in terms of a reasonably rejectable Kantian conception of human flourishing as the free development of autonomous moral agency. The core of political liberalism, accordingly, is its insistence that, in order to retain its legitimacy, the liberal state must commit itself to the ideal of public reason. This roughly means that citizens in their public capacity must engage one another only in terms of reasons whose status as reasons is shared between them. Political reasoning, then, is to proceed purely in terms of public reasons. For example, a Supreme Court justice deliberating on whether or not the denial to homosexuals of the ability to marry constitutes a violation of the Fourteenth Amendment's Equal Protection Clause may not advert to his religious convictions on the matter, but he may take into account the argument that a same-sex household provides sub-optimal conditions for a child's development. This is because reasons based upon the interpretation of sacred text are non-public their force as reasons relies upon faith commitments that can be reasonably rejected, whereas reasons that rely upon the value of providing children with environments in which they may develop optimally are public reasons, their status as reasons draws upon no deep, controversial conception of human flourishing. Rawls held that the duty of civility, the duty of citizens to offer one another reasons that are mutually understood as reasons, applies within what he called the public political forum. This forum extends from the upper reaches of government, for example the supreme legislative and judicial bodies of the society, all the way down to the deliberations of a citizen deciding for whom to vote in state legislatures or how to vote in public referenda. Campaigning politicians should also, he believed, refrain from pandering to the non-public religious or moral convictions of their constituencies. The ideal of public reason secures the dominance of the public political values, freedom, equality, and fairness, that serve as the foundation of the liberal state. But what about the justification of these values? Since any such justification would necessarily draw upon deep religious or moral metaphysical commitments which would be reasonably rejectable, Rawls held that the public political values may only be justified privately by individual citizens. The public liberal political conception and its attendant values may and will be affirmed publicly in judicial opinions and presidential addresses, for example, but its deep justifications will not. The task of justification falls to what Rawls called the reasonable comprehensive doctrines and the citizens who subscribe to them. A reasonable Catholic will justify the liberal values one way, a reasonable Muslim another, and a reasonable secular citizen yet another way. One may illustrate Rawls's idea using a Venn diagram, the public political values will be the shared space upon which overlap numerous reasonable comprehensive doctrines. Rawls's account of stability presented in A Theory of Justice is a detailed portrait of the compatibility of one, Kantian, comprehensive doctrine with justice as fairness. His hope is that similar accounts may be presented for many other comprehensive doctrines. This is Rawls's famous notion of an 
overlapping consensus. Such a consensus would necessarily exclude some doctrines, namely, those that are unreasonable, and so one may wonder what Rawls has to say about such doctrines. An unreasonable comprehensive doctrine is unreasonable in the sense that it is incompatible with the duty of civility. This is simply another way of saying that an unreasonable doctrine is incompatible with the fundamental political values a liberal theory of justice is designed to safeguard, freedom, equality and fairness. So one answer to the question of what Rawls has to say about such doctrines is, nothing. For one thing, the liberal state cannot justify itself to individuals such as religious fundamentalists who hold to such doctrines, because any such justification would, as has been noted, proceed in terms of controversial moral or religious commitments that are excluded from the public political forum. But, more importantly, the goal of the Rawlsian project is primarily to determine whether or not the liberal conception of political legitimacy is internally coherent, and this project is carried out by the specification of what sorts of reasons persons committed to liberal values are permitted to use in their dialogue, deliberations and arguments with one another about political matters. The Rawlsian project has this goal to the exclusion of concern with justifying liberal values to those not already committed, or at least open, to them. Rawls's concern is with whether or not the idea of political legitimacy fleshed out in terms of the duty of civility and mutual justification can serve as a viable form of public discourse in the face of the religious and moral pluralism of modern democratic society, not with justifying this conception of political legitimacy in the first place. Rawls also modified the principles of justice as follows with the first principle having priority over the second, and the first half of the second having priority over the latter half. Each person has an equal claim to a fully adequate scheme of basic rights and liberties, which scheme is compatible with the same scheme for all, and in this scheme the equal political liberties, and only those liberties, are to be guaranteed their fair value. Social and economic inequalities are to satisfy two conditions, first, they are to be attached to positions and offices open to all under conditions of fair equality of opportunity, and second, they are to be to the greatest benefit of the least advantaged members of society. These principles are subtly modified from the principles in theory. The first principle now reads, equal claim, instead of equal right, and he also replaces the phrase, system of basic liberties, with a fully adequate scheme of equal basic rights and liberties. The two parts of the second principle are also switched, so that the difference principle becomes the latter of the three. Topic. The law of peoples Although there were passing comments on international affairs in A Theory of Justice, it wasn't until late in his career that Rawls formulated a comprehensive theory of international politics with the publication of the Law of Peoples. He claimed there that, well-ordered, peoples could be either, liberal, or, decent. Rawls argued that the legitimacy of a liberal international order is contingent on tolerating decent peoples, which differ from liberal peoples, among other ways, in that they might have state religions and deny adherents of minority faiths the right to hold positions of power within the state, and might organize political participation via consultation hierarchies rather than elections. However, no well-ordered peoples may violate human rights or behave in an externally aggressive manner. Peoples that fail to meet the criteria of liberal or decent peoples are referred to as outlaw states societies burdened by unfavorable conditions or benevolent absolutisms depending on their particular failings such peoples do not have the right to mutual respect and toleration possessed by liberal and decent peoples rawls's views on global distributive justice as they were expressed in this work surprised many of his fellow egalitarian liberals for example, Charles Bites had previously written a study that argued for the application of Rawls's difference principles globally. Rawls denied that his principles should be so applied, partly on the grounds that states, unlike citizens, were self-sufficient in the cooperative enterprises that constitute domestic societies. Although Rawls recognized that aid should be given to governments which are unable to protect human rights for economic reasons, he claimed that the purpose for this aid is not to achieve an eventual state of global equality, but rather only to ensure that these societies could maintain liberal or decent political institutions. 
He argued, among other things, that continuing to give aid indefinitely would see nations with industrious populations subsidize those with idle populations and would create a moral hazard problem where governments could spend irresponsibly in the knowledge that they will be bailed out by those nations who had spent responsibly. Rawls's discussion of non-ideal Theory, on the other hand, included a condemnation of bombing civilians and of the American bombing of German and Japanese cities in World War II, as well as discussions of immigration and nuclear proliferation. He also detailed here the ideal of the statesman, a political leader who looks to the next generation and promotes international harmony, even in the face of significant domestic pressure to act otherwise. Rawls also controversially claimed that violations of human rights can legitimize military intervention in the violating states, though he also expressed the hope that such societies could be induced to reform peacefully by the good example of liberal and decent peoples. <laughs> <laughs> Awards and honors Bronze Star for radio work behind enemy lines in World War II Shock Prize for Logic and Philosophy 1999 National Humanities Medal 1999 Asteroid 16561 Rawls is named in his honor Topic Reception and Influence John Rawls is the subject of A Theory of Justice the musical an award nominated musical billed as an all singing, all dancing romp through 2,500 years of political philosophy. The musical premiered at Oxford in 2013 and was revived for the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. The ideas of John Rawls have had wide ranging influence. In the field of religious and moral education, Rawls's concepts of overlapping consensus, reasonable pluralism, and hypothetical contract have been applied to consider problems of fairness and representation in public education, yielding conclusions that differ substantially from his own position on these matters. Some differing conclusions are explored in instrumental and value rationality. Topic: Publications. Topic. Bibliography A Theory of Justice. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Belknap Press of Harvard University Press, 1971. The revised edition of 1999 incorporates changes that Rawls made for translated editions of A Theory of Justice. Some Rawls scholars use the abbreviation TJ to refer to this work. Political Liberalism. The John Dewey Essays in Philosophy, 4. New York, Columbia University Press, 1993. The hardback edition published in 1993 is not identical. The paperback adds a valuable new introduction and an essay titled, Reply to Habermas. Some Rawls scholars use the abbreviation PLACE to refer to this work. The Law of Peoples, with The Idea of Public Reason Revisited. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press, 1999. This slim book includes two works, a further development of his essay entitled, The Law of Peoples, and another entitled, Public Reason Revisited, both published earlier in his career. Collected Papers. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press, 1999. This collection of shorter papers was edited by Samuel Freeman. Lectures on the History of Moral Philosophy. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press, 2000. This collection of lectures was edited by Barbara Herman. It has an introduction on modern moral philosophy from 1600 to 1800 and then lectures on Hume, Leibniz, Kant and Hegel. Justice as Fairness, a Restatement. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Belknap Press, 2001. This shorter summary of the main arguments of Rawls's political philosophy was edited by Aaron Kelly. Many versions of this were circulated in typescript and much of the material was delivered by Rawls in lectures when he taught courses covering his own work at Harvard University. Lectures on the History of Political Philosophy. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press, 2007. Collection of lectures on Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, Joseph Butler, J. J. Rousseau, David Hume, J. S. Mill and Karl Marx, edited by Samuel Freeman. A Brief Inquiry into the Meaning of Sin and Faith. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press, 2010. With introduction and commentary by Thomas Nagel, Joshua Cohen and Robert Marihu Adams. Senior Thesis, Princeton, 1942. 
This volume includes a brief late essay by Rawls entitled On My Religion. Topic articles A study in the grounds of ethical knowledge, considered with reference to judgments on the moral worth of character, Ph.D. Dissertation, Princeton University, 1950. Outline of a Decision Procedure for Ethics, Philosophical Review, April 1951, 60-2, 177-97. Two Concepts of Rules, Philosophical Review, January 1955, 64, 1, 3 to 32. Justice as Fairness, Journal of Philosophy, October 24, 1957, 54, 22, 653 to 62. Justice as Fairness, Philosophical Review, April 1958, 67, 2, 164 to 94. The Sense of Justice, Philosophical Review, July 1963, 72-3, Constitutional Liberty and the Concept of Justice, Nomos v. 1963, Distributive Justice, Sum Addenda, Natural Law Forum, 1968, 1351-71. Reply to Lyons and Tiedelman, Journal of Philosophy, October 5, 1972, 69, 18, 556 to 57. Reply to Alexander and Musgrave, Quarterly Journal of Economics, November 1974, 88, 4, 633 to 55. Some reasons for the Maximin criterion, American Economic Review, May 1974, 64, 2, 141 to 46. Fairness to Goodness, Philosophical Review, October 1975, 84, 4, 536 to 54. The Independence of Moral Theory, Proceedings and Addresses of the American Philosophical Association, November 1975, 48-5-22. A Kantian Conception of Equality, Cambridge Review, February 1975, 96, 2225, 94-99. The Basic Structure as Subject, American Philosophical Quarterly, April 1977, 14, 2, 159 65. Kantian Constructivism in Moral Theory, Journal of Philosophy, September 1980, 77, 9, 515 72. Justice as Fairness, Political Not Metaphysical, Philosophy and Public Affairs, Summer 1985, 14, 3, 223 51. The Idea of an Overlapping Consensus, Oxford Journal for Legal Studies, Spring 1987, 7, 1, 1 25. The Priority of Right and Ideas of the Good, Philosophy and Public Affairs, Fall 1988, 17, 4, 251 76. The Domain of the Political and Overlapping Consensus, New York University Law Review, May 1989, 64, 2, 233 55. Roderick Firth, His Life and Work, Philosophy and Phenomenological Research, March 1991, 51, 1, 109-18. The Law of Peoples. Critical Inquiry, Fall 1993, 20, 36-68. Political Liberalism, Reply to Habermas, Journal of Philosophy, March 1995, 92, 3, 132-80. The Idea of Public Reason Revisited, Chicago Law Review, 1997, 64, 3, 765 to 807. PRR. Topic book chapters: Constitutional Liberty and the Concept of Justice, in Carl J. Friedrich and John W. Chapman, eds. Nomos v. Justice, pp. 98 to 125. Yearbook of the American Society for Political and Legal Philosophy, New York: Atherton Press, 1963. Legal Obligation and the Duty of Fair Play, in Sidney Hook, ed., Law and Philosophy, a Symposium, pp. 3-18. New York, New York University Press, 1964. Proceedings of the Sixth Annual New York University Institute of Philosophy. Distributive Justice, in Peter Laslett and W. G. Runciman, eds., Philosophy, Politics, and Society. Third Series, pp. 58-82. London, Blackwell, New York, Barnes & Noble, 1967. The Justification of Civil Disobedience, in Hugo Adam Badao, ed., Civil Disobedience, Theory and Practice, pp. 240-55. New York, Pegasus Books, 1969. Justice as Reciprocity, in Samuel Gorovitz, ed., Utilitarianism, John Stuart Mill, with Critical Essays, pp. 242-68. New York, Bob's Merrill, 1971. 
Authors note, in Thomas Schwartz, ed., Freedom and Authority, An Introduction to Social and Political Philosophy, p. 260. Encino and Belmont, California, Dickinson, 1973. Distributive Justice, in Edmund S. Phelps, ed., Economic Justice, Selected Readings, pp. 319-62. Penguin Modern Economics Readings. Harmonsworth and Baltimore, Penguin Books, 1973. Personal Communication, January 31, 1976, in Thomas Nagel's The Justification of Equality. Critica, April 1978, 10, 28, 9 and 4. The Basic Liberties and Their Priority, in Sterling M. McMurrin, ed., The Tanner Lectures on Human Values, 3, 1982, pp. 1-87. Salt Lake City, University of Utah Press, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 1982. Social Unity and Primary Goods in Sen, Amartya, Williams, Bernard, eds. 1982. Utilitarianism and Beyond. Cambridge, Paris, Cambridge University Press, Editions de la Maison des Sciences de l'Homme. pp. 159 to 85. ISBN 9780511611000 Hoffman, Michael 1989. Stanford, California, Stanford University Press, 1989. Topic Reviews Review of Axel Hagerstrom's Inquiries into the Nature of Law and Morals C.D. Broad, T.R. Mind, July 1955, 64, 255, 421-22. Review of Stephen Toulmin's An Examination of the Place of Reason in Ethics, 1950. Philosophical Review, October 1951, 60, 572-80. Review of A. Wilhelm Lundstedt's Legal Thinking Revised. Cornell Law Quarterly, 1959, 44-169. Review of Raymond Klebanski, ed., Philosophy in Mid-Century, A Survey. Philosophical Review, January 1961, 70-1, 131-32. Review of Richard B. Brandt, ed., Social Justice, 1962. Philosophical Review, July 1965, 74, 3, 40609. Topic. See also. Anarchy, State, and Utopia. List of American philosophers. List of liberal theorists. Philosophy of economics. A Theory of Justice, The Musical Topic. Notes Topic. References Freeman, S. 2007, Rawls, Routledge, Abingdon. Freeman, Samuel 2009, Original Position. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, 1. Rawls, J. 1993, 1996-2005 Political Liberalism Columbia University Press, New York. Rawls, John 1971. A Theory of Justice Original Ed. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Belknap Press of Harvard University Press. ISBN 0674017722. Rawls, John 2001. Justice as Fairness, A Restatement 2nd Ed. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 9780674005112. Rawls, John 2017. Obituary, John Rawls. 2. Tampio, N. 2011. A Defense of Political Constructivism. Contemporary Political Theory, 3. Subscription Required. Wenner, Leaf 2008. John Rawls. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, 4. Topic. External links. Audio recordings of Rawls 1983 lecture course. Modern Political Philosophy. Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy entry on John Rawls by Henry S. Richardson. 
Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy Entry on Political Constructivism by Michael Buckley Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy Entry on John Rawls by Leif Wenner Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy Entry on Original Position by Fred D'Agostino Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy Entry on Reflective Equilibrium by Norman Daniels <laughs>